disappointed in everyone of you. I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend you. I'm disappointed in everyone of you. I kiss you on the mouth. No, no, I'm not, I'm not cool with that. Just, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. One more time. I'm disappointed in everyone of you. I mean, I'm dealing with degenerate animals. Oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm disappointed in everyone. Yo, yo, I'm disappointed in everyone. Okay. All right, all right, come on. Honestly, I can't do it, man. I'm, I'm disappointed in everyone. Then let me tell you why. It's gonna be all right, Nicky. Go ahead, go ahead, shoot, shoot, shoot. Just kill the fucking man. Ah! What are you going to do about it? Yeah, because you got nothing. I don't gotta say. Yeah, because you got nothing. Lorito. You got nothing. I want to get out. I want to get out of this rat hole. I want to get online. I need BDA boxing. Welcome, everybody, to another BD Boxing Podcast, broadcasting to you live from the true north. It's a good friend, Mr. BDA, and I sure am glad. Sure am glad that everybody could be on board for this one, fellas. Thank you for joining us on this uh, relatively late-night edition of the BDA Podcast. It was a bit of an impromptu session, because I just got done watching the fights from last night. I did not watch them live, so I decided, you know what, I got a couple of things to say about it, and I'm curious to hear what other people have to say, especially the people here from our community. So we're going to be opening up the phone lines perhaps earlier than usual, depending on who jumps on. We'll see what happens. We'll do it on the fly. Before we get down to the fun, fellas, let's get the business out of the way. You know the drill. If you want to send a couple of shekels our way, you can certainly do so with the Super Chat feature. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify. It's always better, by the way, if you want to make a donation to join the membership program. That way you get more bang for your buck. But the most important thing, fellas, is always that you continue to like and subscribe, all right? That's the most important thing. Spread the BDA gospel. There's a lot of dirty people out there, uninitiated, unwashed masses that need to be converted, all right? The Crimson Inquisition is at hand. Are you going to be part of it on the receiving end or the one giving it? Depends. It's up to you. Uh, I'm going to give a big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Talking about the Gucci Berserk, uh, Brian Montes, the Lollipop Man, the Can Man, Fluffy Toaster 89. Gadnock, Breaker of Worlds, JC, Grim Reaper, Johnny Blaze, shout out to Johnny Blaze, Exponet, Antonio Hernandez, SSC in the house as well, Knockout Ned, Double L, many more people to come, I'm sure, fellas, thank you for joining us, really appreciate it. All right, let me see if I can uh, get a couple of people to jump on board here. Because again, we had, it's always, well, not always, but almost all the time, the cards that you think are going to be the least interesting, the ones that don't have that many juicy matchups on paper, they actually turn out to be better than expected. So uh, that's what happened last night, essentially. I wasn't expecting much. And I said, you know what? Let me go to sleep here. I got no time for this bullshit. I'll catch the fights tomorrow. Then I wake up and I see that the, the fights were much more competitive than, than I expected. So I said, let me jump on board here and uh, catch... A couple of uh, things of what, what happened. What are people saying in the chat, right, by the way? Lollipop Man says, you want a lollipop BDA? No, people got to be dirty all the time, man. Come on. Uh, Jesus M says, saludos. LL says, Bactana got broken. He did indeed. He did indeed. I'm telling you this. A lot of these American fighters, these protected American fighters, once things stop going their way, they tend to break down and do some of the most outrageous things out there, uh, including breaking the rules. Really makes you scratch your head and think what's going on here. But I, I want to talk about the Janibek fight first. Uh, Janibek Amika Hunuli, if that's even how you say it. I don't know. I've never really tried to spell his last name. So let's just call him Janibek. We'll make an exception and call him by his first name. Went the distance and earned himself a unanimous decision against a cool name. A guy with a cool name, Denzel Bentley. Probably not his real name, but 
If it is, kudos to him. But having a cool name does not get you a win, as we saw last night. Now, a lot of people, from what I'm hearing in the message boards and in the comment section of videos, in the comment sections over at Ring TV and other sources, hear a lot of people saying that Janibek is overhyped. I can, under I can certainly understand the sentiment. I mean, whoever was running his, his Twitter page, by the way, was certainly doing a good job of overhyping him. I don't think he was writing some of those uh, tweets. A lot of tweets uh, with predatory overtones saying, I'm going to get you. I'm coming for you. I think he even intimated that he went to murder people. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe my mind's playing tricks on me. But uh, he, he went the distance against Bentley. Now, I got to tell you, I went into these fights biased because I, I'd read so much in the morning about how, oh, this guy struggled, this guy struggled. So it's okay, let me, let me, let me watch and really see what happened. First three rounds, he wasn't that bad. I didn't see much problem with what was going on, other than the fact that his timing seemed a little off. This uh, Bentley fella has that classic Ghanaian style. He's actually not from Ghana, is he? He's from the UK, but he finds like a guy from, from Ghana. He's got those, that, that, those earmuffs on, and he can counter with straight rights, very straight punches, which uh, sent uh, Janibek, threw him off for a loop. And I was scratching my head, and I'm thinking, all right, he's, you know, Janibek looks a little off, but I don't see what the problem is. Then by the fourth, uh, Bentley started lining some flush shots. I'll tell you what, though. Janibek, what I didn't like about him was that his footwork seemed a little off. Bentley was doing a good job of keeping him off range, off balance. He seemed to have a hard time getting his timing on foot. And uh, what else did I dislike? Oh, yeah, no combination. Very little combination punching. And I didn't really like that. And like most southpaws, no real jab to speak of. Maybe once in a while he would spear with one coming in a la Lomachenko. But other than that, he wasn't really snapping those jabs. But then I, I, I watched the end of the fight and I saw him turn it on late. And I said, I, you know, okay, he didn't look as good as people wanted him to or as, as, as you know, they were used to. But here's the problem, though. And this is where the overhyping thing occurred or comes into play. His best opponents or his best known opponents were Brandt and, uh, and them. Two guys that are past it and who have already been beaten a whole bunch of times. Easy to look good against those guys. Easy to look like a million bucks against those guys. You fight too many of those no-hopers. Once you step in there with a guy with a pulse, uh, you, you, it's going to be hard to find your footing. So I think that's what happened with Janibic. As for whether he's a hype job, well, again, who was overhyping him? Was it his own people, which, you know, they're supposed to overhype a guy? That, that, that's their business. He himself, on or whoever was, like I said, running his Twitter account, was certainly overhyping him. But I saw a guy that is very elusive. I saw a guy that can crack. He's got a certain off timing to him. Not that easy to, to find in the ring. And who is very disciplined. Turned it up late. And that's what that's the interesting thing about Janibig because some people were comparing him to Andrid, right? Or, and, uh, uh, yeah, Andrid. I was going to say Andrade, but I remembered he doesn't like being called it. So I'm going to respect that and call him Andrid. Now, some people were saying, well, Andrade, who went up in weight to avoid, in a way, Janibek. Now, some people are saying, oh, you see, I think Andrade would have schooled him. I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I'm not going to dig in too much in, on Janibek for going 12 rounds and finally getting hit a couple of times in the ring. Because he actually, if you throw away all the hype about him, like I said, you, just the skeleton, skeleton bare bones version of what we saw, it's a pretty good guy in there. Pretty good fighter, pretty difficult to find, like I said, in the ring, good stamina. He actually turned up the fight late. First of all, he didn't run. He didn't clinch. I mean, there were parts where they felt into each other and there, were, there was a little bit of a lull there, a little bit of a clinch, but he wasn't actively looking for the clinch. He wasn't running around the ring. He wasn't back foot bitching it. I, I, I don't really understand why. I think people, are, some people are going overboard with their criticism of Janibek, saying that he was exposed and so on. Uh, like I said, I like this, that the way he fought, uh, he put the pressure on late in the fight. I mean, that's what you're supposed to do. When it happened, like, again, we're, we're, people are comparing him to Andre. Oh, hold on a sec. Gonzalo's calling me. Gonzalo, you there? Ah, shit. Gonzalo, jump on, man. I can hear you. I, there you go. Gonzalo, you there, man. Let me just uh, finish here what I'm saying about Janibek, and then I'll throw it to you. Uh, but what was I going to say? About, yeah, so people are comparing him to Andre. I've never seen Andre 
falling behind on the fight or looking behind the fight, which he certainly has, and then him turning it up late. In fact, it's the opposite. He starts off quickly. He starts off looking good and like a power puncher sometimes. And then he goes to shit and starts clinching, starts huffing and puffing, winging left hands, a, a real lack of offensive cre uh, creativity. So that to me, so Janibek, yeah, did he look bad in there? Like I said, yeah, when he's fighting no hopers and he fi you finally put him in there with a guy with a pulse, that's going to deteriorate the guy's skills, fighting a bunch of no hopers. But like I said, he made adjustments. He turned it on late. I've never seen a guy like Andre do that. I haven't seen, like, for example, Jermel Charlo do that. Jer uh, Jermel, actually. Jermel, actually, who a lot of people consider to be the better Charlo, doesn't really make adjustments either. He just bails himself out with his bungee power. So I got to commend Janibek a little bit here for getting in the ring with a guy that was unheralded and gave him a hard time early on. Those are the hard guys to push it past because some guys can get discouraged fighting a guy like that. They go, oh shit, this guy, he's not supposed to be here with me. Then they try their hardest to get him out of there. The, the harder they try, the more they miss, the more they miss, the more they get tired and it just devolves into an awful performance. So was it his best performance? Of course not. In fact, it does make me think uh, how good is he really. But then again, I never bought into the hype. I never said, this guy's a killer. He's going to retire this guy. He's going to beat everybody. Because uh, you know, how much can you really gleam from a guy that, whose best opponents are Rob Brandt and Hazan and them? I got the one, the only Gonzalo dropping in. Gonzalo, you there? Hey, what's up, Mr. PDA? What's up? Thank you for being on, man. Yeah, I'm just talking about Janibek and how he didn't look the greatest, but... I mean, that's to be expected when his best opponents so far have been Rob Brandt and Hazan and them. How, how good are you really going to... Uh, how good can you be or how good can we gauge you, what, uh, you know, when, when you've been fighting those type of, of opponents? What did you think of, of the fight? Well, he won clearly. I mean, there's, there's always been fighters that fight fights and it's a close win. It's a, it's a mm -hmm. fight where he... Barely edges it out. Think of Mayweather. I mean, how many times did he barely scrape by and and win the rounds by outlanding his opponent by one punch? And at the end of the day, he fucking won, and they gave him all the credit in the world. They're not gonna pick. They're not gonna pick his victories apart and, and criticize too hard for for some people. And I don't care. I don't care who who, who that is. I mean, just basic simple fanboyism. When you when you don't want to criticize in a close fight, the, people don't say nothing sometimes. But the, the the important thing, really, at the end of the day, especially in, in a time where people are competitive, man. You know, it, it's I think it's more competitive now than it was maybe 10, 20 years ago because people are prepared. Especially like this guy that fought him, he's gonna make the best out of his make the best out of his opportunity. I mean, the important thing is that he won 8-4. He came strong in the last two rounds. And basically, if you want to uh, pick uh, apart uh, who the other guy was, he fought a, a UK dude that was undefeated with, with 15 fights and 10 knockouts. And uh, he was able to knock him out. But the dude's got power. He's got 15 wins and 10 knockouts. Felix Cash knocked this dude out. So mm -hmm. you can't, because he got knocked out one time, doesn't mean that he has a bad chin. Motherfucker got caught, got stopped. And now he came back against, um, what's his name, um, Johnny Pick, and he performed pretty well, but he still lost convincingly. So what can you say about a fighter that wins eight rounds uh, to four? Still fucking won. And like I said, what I liked about him was that, and this is something that you don't see from every other fighter, which is he turned it up. He ended the fight strong. All, you know, hurt the guy late in the fight. You can't buy that. You can't manufacture that through, uh, you know, putting a guy in there with a bunch of tomato cans and patsy. So I got to commend the guy for doing that. I think some people are being a little bit too harsh with the criticisms of him. But I do, I, I think when people see a, a undefeated record and they see a guy dominating, they do think, oh, he's going to be able to do this to everybody. I don't think that's going to be the case with Janibek. I think uh, he's not a one-punch knockout type of guy. He's quick, but he's not lightning fast. I think he's just a smooth operator, but I don't think he's going to be running through people. Or maybe, like you said, maybe Bentley is better than expected. Or, you know, if you're going to go to the middle way, maybe it's a little bit of both. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people are saying that, you know, yeah. like when I... Yeah. Yeah, be, being objective, okay, what, what does he do good? What did you think he did better, but actually he doesn't do as good as you maybe previously thought? 
he doesn't hit as hard as maybe some people thought. He's got eight knockouts in what thirteen fights now, mm-hmm. and so but he does have power, and you know he throws straight punches. So that gets to people. I thought that would be a difficult style for Andrade because Andrade, Andrade like you said, he, he he pulls back. And if you're pulling back the way Andrade does does when he starts to fall apart, and if you're a guy that just pushes forward and throws straight punches, dude, that that doesn't give that uh, opponent, I, I would think, an opportunity to get his head out of the way if you're constantly being pressured and you're staying on the opponent. So that's what Jenny Beck does good. He applies pressure. While throwing the straight punches and not allowing you to, to get your distance most of the time. He doesn't hit hard. He doesn't hit as hard, but he hits hard enough to keep you honest and, and keep you thinking or, or uh, keep you with that pressure on you. So that could be seen as good. Is it really bad? No, it depends how he applies the pressure and utilizes the punching power that he has. And I do see him as a pressure fighter. Now, he can also take a punch. So when he fights another opponent that's good, that has different type of qualities, with the style that he possesses, he's going to make it difficult for him. That's Did right. He, style makes fights, right? So he didn't look that good, but that doesn't mean that he cannot look better before. Now, I'm not jumping on the fucking bandwagon and saying that, oh, he's unstoppable. No, I, if I were Munguia's team, I would be like chomping at the bit, as they say. You know, how do they say that? Like, yeah, I chomping, would be... Yeah. Salivating. I, I would be thinking, okay... Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty but, much uh, it. But I, but I tell you what, though, Gonzalo, and I, I think that's, you know, Mungi, I think, is a better fighter than Bentley. Uh, just for this, if cheers, like, for example, if I put Mungi in there with Bentley, I would expect Bentley to have a, a very good time in there himself. I think he would have some success, but I think Mungi, a very strong guy, his size advantage, his power, I think eventually would, would get him the win. I don't, like I said, I don't think it would be easy, but I do think Mungi would take it. But, you put Mungi in there with Janabek, and I think Janabek boxes circles around him. And, but, but without running, necessarily. Could be a lower-tier version of Cepeda versus... I mean, Surdo versus uh, Bivol. Could be wrong. But like you said, hey, finally people saw that Janabek is not invincible. Hey, maybe, maybe now Golden Boy decides to do what they did with Surdo, which is to, hey, let's put this guy in there with uh, Janabek. Worst-case scenario. Worst-case scenario, Mungi loses. All right, he loses. Put him in there against a bunch of tomato cans. He looks great again. Boom! You build back the fan base, and you you get uh, you keep doing more money at the gate. Uh, he's a young guy. What is he? 24, 25? maybe less than that. So I, I don't see what the problem would be in putting uh, Mungia in there. Finally, with Johnny Beck, he loses. He loses. Fine. Look at look at Canelo. He lost against he lost against Mayweather. Did that hurt his box office appeal? No. In fact, when he came back against Angulo. Did pretty good numbers at the gate and uh, pay-per-views. Pay-per-views actually did, what was it, 300,000? <laughs> you know, when, when Tank Davis does 200,000, oh, they're, they're popping up, open the champagne bottle. So I think this is, uh, well, what do you think, Gonzalo? Shouldn't they put in Mungia in there against Johnny Big? What do they have to lose yeah, is what I'm asking. M- Mungia was a champion at 160. And at this point, I don't think that he's really going to get it any better. It's going to basically grow more and have like uh, uh, improvements to the point where he's not ready or, or if he, he's, he's, he's got to be ready now and he's got to take advantage of his youth so I think Mungia is one of those things uh, he's a good fighter but he might be one of those guys that in other words he doesn't like to listen a lot of times because it's ingrained in his DNA to fucking be aggressive and fight he's got size mm-hmm. he's got punching power and and it's a guy that you could teach him how to be defensive, but he can't really do two things at one time, like be offensive and defensive, because he's going to throw the defense out the window based right. on his aggressive mentality. You know, so it's like it's not that he can't get away from the right hands, like the one that they knew he do it, and some other guy were throwing in the, in the middle way he knew it, and he mm-hmm. couldn't just fucking get out of the way. It's not so much that he can't; it's just he, he just he abandons that. Um, he abandons that 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 that, that frame of mind and, and and starts acting starts acting reckless because mm-hmm. he wants to land his own shots. And I don't, I don't, you see, it's like one of those things. I don't really take anything away from him doing that or like a criticism too bad. Because obviously, he's, I think he's shown to have a good chin. So if you can walk through some punches in order to land yours, because you you think that yours are going to create more damage than the punches that you're taking, 
and and the end game for you is is, is finishing the fight before the twelfth round. Dude, you got the fucking knockout. Even even now, with these people are not content when somebody knocks another dude out, but he takes in some licks on the way. It's like, I don't get it, man. If your end game is to knock you out and when you take some punches down the way and it, it turns out to actually be an exciting fight, hey, I got no problem with that. So with him and Johnny Bick, it would be that type of fight. Johnny Bick is a tough dude. He comes forward. He hurt Bentley, and he kept applying pressure. You know, his conditioning is good. Mugia exactly. as well, his conditioning might be kind of like his, but I'd say Johnny Pick is better. I would say Mugia hits a little harder, and none of these two guys are going to back away. So he's got, uh, being, uh, what's it, Jan Johnny Pick's going to test Mugia's engine and his metal, and it's going to be one of, one of those type of fights. I think Johnny Pick will land more. And Mungia would get touched up, but it's not because he's garbage. It's because basically he would just uh, abandon that mentality that I got to um, be defensive. I'm just going to go out there and try to knock you out as well. So it'd be a good fight. That's they right. both got yeah, nothing to lose. I think Mungia is as proved as he could be. Listen, Mungia is 26. I, I think just he's checked. ready. Right. I, I just checked the record. He's 26. So what my thinking is this. You can't avoid this guy forever because then he starts looking bad. We hardcore boxing fans. And really, at the end of the day, we're what matters. Because it's very hard to become a mainstream star and get non-boxing fans, aka the casuals, to follow a fighter. It's, it's uh, you know, Canelo has done it, Josh has done it. Who else? Out of hundreds of fighters out there, only two have been able to do it so far right now in, in, in our present day. Mayweather, Pacquiao, those guys are, it's over with. Now, what I'm saying is, if they avoid Janibek so much, like I said, he's going to piss off the casual, I mean, <laughs> excuse me, the hardcore boxing fans. So it's better to match him up there with Johnny Beck now. Like I said, if he loses, he's not going to lose that much clout. In fact, it, it might actually be better for him long term because look at Surdo. I, me mentally, he's never going to be that guy. But maybe Mungia will be. But we're not going to find out until they finally match him up. And he's only 26. If he fights Johnny Beck, maybe he, it makes him a better fighter. Yeah, he loses, but next time, you know, he does well, blah, blah, blah. He can walk into the ring with his head high. And now he knows, okay, now that I've been in the ring with a guy like that, and every other guy is going to be, or might be uh, easier to fight. I mean, you just never know. So, like I said, there's not much that, that much to lose other than the O. And p p promoters and fans, they really have to let that concept of the O go. The undefeated record is overrated. Like I said, just look, take a look at Surdo. It's better to lose or have tough outings early on than to have them when it really matters and you end up losing. Uh, shout out to Joker, who agrees with us. He says, hell yeah, Mungia win, lose or draw versus Janibek. Give the fans what they want to see. Reese Max says, rest in peace, Anthony Johnson. Yeah, what the fuck happened to that guy? Apparently he was ill. But they didn't say what. J. Colt says, Bradley saying this fight was all but done in the second was something else. This is getting unhinged, borderline, deranged. J. Colt, I did not watch the fight because I didn't watch it live. So I, the, 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 the service that I have doesn't allow you to rewatch fights, TSN, whatever it's called. So I watched it on, on, on another website and I was watching the BT Sports version. So I was spared the ESPN commentary. But yeah, man, I, from what I've heard and from what I've been hearing from Top Rank's commentary, it's just, uh, it's time to reach for that mute button whenever it's on Top Rank because Bradley and Andrew Ward, just a horrible combination. Uh, Jamel Herring, on the other hand, like we said with the Taraji versus Kiriguchi fight, that was aces. Coco the Bulldog says, nobody knows the cause of death. Yeah, man, what the fuck? It's a shame. Uh, Antonio Hernandez says, Andre, the sloppy fighter, is a sloppy fighter whose athleticism gets him the win. Eventually, a sharp, sharp fighter will make him look stupid. Well, Andre is just the the, the half-black, half-Panamanian version of Zurdo Ramirez. Another guy that fought relative nobodies, struggled with guys that he shouldn't have struggled with, cause, you know, it, based on the hype that he gets. And eventually, he's going to run up. He would have lost already had he fought Canelo, had he fought Golovkin. Jeez, maybe even Jermall Charlo would have beaten him. Andre just does not have the pulmonary resources, aka the stamina, to to stay consistent and uh, throughout twelve rounds to outbox a high caliber fighter. Gonzalo, what do you think? Am I wrong here? Oh well, yeah, that's true because because you can see when he starts falling apart, you can notice the things that he doesn't keep together very well in the ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like falling apart and and and. 
and getting all disheveled, legs wide apart, dipping uh, low at the waist to a certain side where he can get Clinching. caught with uppercuts. Um, yeah, clinching, losing the punching power, which, I mean, it's okay, it's normal, but what I'm saying is he looks pretty good in the beginning. Um, and so there's there's some other guys, like, for example, Jenny Pick, he, he, he might not be A-plus is all across the board in all the categories, speed, punching power, defense, uh, whatnot, but at least what he does, he's consistent, and he he doesn't show like a vulnerability is really he's pretty solid so for those reasons i mean what's the one thing that okay that the that, that andrade does uh, that he's outstanding with okay he might be explosive in the beginning three four five rounds in the next he'll probably end up running and clinching but by then in his mind and his handlers and his fans oh he's uh he's picked up a certain lead that he can run away with the with the decision but mm -hmm. they never criticize that. They'll call that a master class. But with another <laughs> exactly, guy, yeah. he's pretty dominant. And he, yeah, like Johnny Beck, he was pretty dominant. And he never showed any signs that he got frustrated to the point where he started falling apart. No, he actually picked it up. And it's a tough fight. The other dude brought it. I get it. Um, I, I would say that's a pretty solid performance. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Look, listen, I can criticize. I'm, I'm fine with people criticizing him because, again, he did show a some porous defense or inconsistent defense. I didn't like the lack of combination punching, all of that. But like you said, overall, it was a solid performance. I'll tell you what, I'd rather fight a guy like Android, who I know I could take into deep waters if I have iron lungs, than to fight a guy like Janibek, who, okay, maybe I'll get some success early, but he's not going to get weaker or substantially weaker. In fact, he's going to turn it on later on. And who, I mean, this guy is disciplined as fuck, so... Uh, but like you said, but with Andre, he can run, he can spot shot, he can clinch, make it, you know, slip all over the ring. That's a masterclass. Janibek gets hit a couple of times, even though, and even though he turns it up late and actually ends up the fight stronger, he's a hype job. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's the thing that I think people are exaggerating. You know, and, and I, I get it. Let, let's say I'm not having a, a good day. Like my life is not necessarily like going the way I want. There's not a lot of there's not a lot of fucking boxing, and it, it's pretty fucking toxic. Like um, when people look at these fighters, especially he's not American, and I get it. Uh, and uh, yo, you're fucking defending that too. You're making it sound like it was a fucking like like he's still the the the, the boogeyman. Okay, maybe he lost the status of the boogeyman, Jenny Beck, mm -hmm. Jenny Beck. But what I'm saying is, you can't go all hard criticizing the performance. Then the next time the dude fights and he looks better, he didn't go from being good to being a piece of shit fighter to all of a sudden propping the dude again because you got to keep it consistent. I might not be having a good day and when people are listening to what I'm saying, it's like, why are you investing so much energy to protect this dude when you're talking? To like, um, make him sound relevant, like it really fucking matters. But in the end of the day, it's not my life. I'm just uh, a spectator. And when I'm, when I'm telling you what I see, I don't have to neither like them or hate them, but I don't have to be like, I don't have to tear them apart for no fucking reason. And I don't have to be so excited because boxing is fucking, uh, it's lost its zeal, man, to tell you the truth. It's really? not the most exciting thing right now. But well, I mean, still, right you know, now, it's one of those things. Listen, right now, boxing, yeah, the, the end of the year, which usually, usually boxing ends the year with a bang, November, December. This one, it's with a whimper. And it's, it's, it's rare in the last, I can't remember the last time we had a fall this dire, but it's going to pick up, believe me. And we still have some good fights. Like you said, Benalo Lopez, uh, Cepeda versus, uh, versus Pro Gray. We still got Estrada versus Chocolatito. I think Estrada's going to get back up in, for that fight. He's going to look better. I expect him to, unless he's shot. I don't know. Uh, what else? There's another fight, man. That I'm, that I'm, I got to scratch my head here to figure out. But yeah, but I, I do agree. Cepeda versus Pro Gray is... Yeah, I mentioned that one. But, but you're Chocolatito, right. Right now, boxing, you said Chocolatito But listen, Gonzalo, like you said, last night, I didn't even watch the fights because I thought they were going to be a soft par. At least they were on paper. Then boxing shows us that just when you think everything's you know, said and done, <laughs> just wipe your hands, boom. It's, that's why they fight. That's why when people go, well, this guy beats that guy. I don't want to see the fight. How the fuck do you know? Or when people... I, I remember when Spence beat Kel Brook and then beat Mikey Garcia convincingly people are like oh he he can go up to middleweight and beat canelo who can stop him blah 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 
And Sean Porter takes, you know, gives him life and death there. Or they go, he went life and death, rather. With Sean Porter, I'm thinking, there you go. Fight the best in your division first before you start saying that nobody can beat him and just anointing him the Messiah. You know, it's Andre too, a little bit. People were, you know, that's, he was the, the, the black Muhammad. He turns out, he turned out to be a false Messiah. He's already 35 now, I think. So, yeah, people, people should really, and Janibek too, people should hold their, their praise of a fighter when all they fight is tomato cans. And, even, and, and when they fight the best fighters ever, or, or uh, excuse me, when they fight their best opposition and they're running around the ring and clinching and all that, it really should make you stop and think about how good a fighter is. And like you said, Gonzalo, watch the actual fucking fights. Because people just go on box rec and then they go, oh, well, this guy's got a loss, so he must suck. I mean, how many people did that, that with uh, Warrington and, and Lada? They didn't even watch uh, Lada's fights over the uh, uh, box Azteca. But you could see that the guy was strong, punched like hell. I mean, come on, watch the fights, fellas. It's, it, nowadays yeah. with YouTube, there's no excuse. You can watch at least the highlights. And honestly, from, from, a, from a person that I have always, uh, I've always admired the sport. And you got to think, like, realistically, is it that bad to go 12 rounds? Is it, is, it, is it the worst thing in the world to fight 12 rounds? I think it's actually a good thing. Because you gain experience. And now, mm -hmm. I, that's what I'm saying. People are going to say, oh, you sound cheesy as fuck. Like, you sound like a fucking nerd. No, but to, that's reality. Right? That's right, yeah. No, you're absolutely right. Listen, uh, when you, you go, go 12 rounds, it's a good thing. That's what I always heard and what I always was under the impression and taught. Sometimes you can't be like, uh, what's that guy, the middleweight, the, the, another 68 pounder, um, the, the Puerto Rican dude, Berlanga. Oh, Berlanga, Berlanga. You're knocking Berlanga. everybody out with, within, yeah, within one, two rounds. Hey, how do you know what, um, how far your gas tank can carry you? And it's better to, to get that experience <laughs> for you're more readily prepared down the road, right? Exactly. For fights. But but the, the reason why I'm laughing, I'm listening to what you're saying, but Chidley Distributor in the chat says, Bet Nalgas. <laughs> no, but you're right, Gonzalo. Listen, let me read a, a chat, uh, comment here. Warped, uh, warped Speed says, and I think this is a good uh, way of putting it. He says, ah, shit, hold on. He says, consistency, especially with, when one displays consistency at greatness, aptitude is important. To have a bad outing performance should be of some concern. That or the opponent is capable. And that, that brings me to what you said about Bernaligas. I mean, Berlanga. This guy looks awful. He looks bad because he, throughout the fight, doesn't do anything. In fact, sometimes he'll end the fight weaker than, he, than the, the, the way he started. Whereas Janabek, at least, okay, he had a hard time with the guy. He didn't have an easy time, but at least he turned it up late and uh, almost, well, I didn't stop him, but he hurt the guy. He had him uh, weak at the knees there. So, that's something that I like to see from a fighter where he goes, okay, I might not be looking the greatest, but I'm going to get this guy. For as long as it goes, I'm only going to be, be getting better and stronger and this guy's going to have a harder time. He's going to wish that the, for the last bell to ring. So I, I got to give him credit for that. But I got like Belanga who throughout 12 rounds gets worse. Or I got like Bum Dave, uh, Tank Davis who like against uh, Isaac Cruz running, pot shotting, his pot shots weren't working. So a lot of clinching. And the excuse that I heard from some people was, well, he, he didn't really start clinching until he hurt his hand. First of all, we don't really know if he hurt his hand. He just said, oh, I got an ouchie, and people believed him. And second, if you watch the fight, and I've watched it a whole bunch of times, he was clinching from the second, first round on. More so in the second and third than the first. But so, I mean, come on, don't give me that shit. That's a bad performance. So that's my thing about that. Uh, Gonzalo, let's move on to the uh, Montana Love fight here. Because we're talking about overrated, blah, blah, blah. Now we're talking about an Amerobum whose flashy hands led some people to believe that he was, you know, this, this big star, or at least in his head, coming out with the grand pumping circumstance, you know, the grand entrance, like he's at the ball, like, like he's fucking Liberace. So he fights Stevie Sparks, strong Australian, gets dropped in the second, gets hurt in the fifth or sixth, I believe, gets hit with a headbutt, Rushes in. To his credit, he, he continues fighting after the, the bad cut. Then he throws Stevie Parks out of the ring like he's in a WWE event and he gets disqualified. 
another Amero bomb who found out that you can't try to replicate Mayweather because there's only one Mayweather. Gonzalo, what'd you make of that fight? Yeah, yeah, the headbutt, uh, righty versus lefty. Um, I think the biggest thing, and I've heard Jimmy say the expression, I actually looked it up. This is a perfect example when you talk about the, the grand deal century, uh, mm -hmm. putting the cart before the horse. Uh -huh. And th this is why it's important. Because you set, you set, you set yourself up for failure. And, and you know, he's on that, on that I said it on, on Repits, it's like, he's on that king shit, like Deontay Wilder. He got a girl massaging him in the back, you know, like... Like he's this, he's like he's this man that, <laughs> that he needs to feel that he uh, he needs to be worshipped. Yeah. Because he feels that special. But you need to you need to walk the walk in order to walk the walk. Or be, if you're gonna be about talk about it, be about it. That's and right. I'm not saying that he isn't, but until you prove that in the ring, how do how the, how do we know? How does he know? So basically, you know what that tells me about his personality? He's pampering himself. And when you pamper yourself like that, and you have your your girlfriend or your uh, look at my little dog, I'm looking at me, I'm getting a massage. Look at my nice outfit. That means that when you when you treat yourself like that, you're pampering yourself, and you're actually making yourself weaker because you're not toughening up your mind. Exactly. So when it comes to delivering, you already you already think that you've already like, oh, I'm special, and you feel that you have nothing to prove to yourself, so you end up hurting yourself. In my opinion, that's an excellent point, Gonzalo. Excellent, excellent point. Because, and that's you know, we've heard it uh, for a whole bunch of times throughout our lifetime. So it's just some people don't want to hear it. Where the Chihuahua always barking. Meow, 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 meow. Why? Because it's scared. So it's the same thing with people. I mean, it's common sense that people that, that usually. Generally, the people that bark the most are the, are the most more uh, mentally most mentally fragile, and like you said, a lot. It, it, that's why, and you see it in culture too, especially on Twitter and the YouTube boxing community, where people go, "Well, this guy, he's always barking. He called this guy out. He called that guy out." I've even heard some people use the argument, "Oh, this guy's being avoided," and then they go, "You ask him how? How do you know he's being avoided? Oh, because he called this guy out and he didn't fight him." It's like, so, so he called him out on Twitter. I, I could call somebody out on Twitter. I could call fucking Anthony Joshua out on Twitter. And if he doesn't reply, why is he ducking me? It's, like, it's such idiocy. Yeah, I mean, it's just moronic the way some people think out there. But you're right, Gonzalo. This fucking Montana love. And he doesn't really seem like that bad a guy. But it's just, you know, he's trying to, he's trying to, look, listen, when Canelo does his grand entrance, I don't like it. But at least, at least he's a big star. He gets to do it because he's gotten to that point. This guy is fighting in front of a, like a half-empty arena, or at least that's what it seemed to me. Fighting some dude that most people had never even heard of. And like you said, he's coming out there like, like he's Julius Caesar. I don't know, man. It was just a bad look. But, but what about the fight itself, Gonzalo? What did you, uh, what did you think of it? What happens well, in the rematch? Spark said he, he, knocked down, he knocked down Montana Love in the second round. And the Sparks dude, he got power. I think out of 17 fights, last one time against Costa Azul, I saw the fight actually the night oh, before, really? just to know a little bit about him. Um, Stevie Sparks, he got stopped by Costa Azul with a body shot. Costa Azul's a big dude, he hits hard. But anyhow, Stevie Sparks, uh, in this fight against Montana Love, I mean, he, 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 uh, uh, Stevie Sparks got power. And, and, and Montana Love was doing okay, but what I'm saying by doing okay, it doesn't mean that he was necessarily winning the rounds, but they were probably giving the rounds to him. I'm going to tell you why. Because, you know, in that, uh, in that stance that, that the Mayweather, like, kind of like the bladed fucking, uh, what do you call that? The Philly, the Philly shell. shell. The Philly shell, yeah. The Philly shell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Philly shell. People, like, we got so used to thinking that when you have that commanding stance, that just by standing like that alone, you deserve extra credit fucking points. That uh -huh. means you're winning the round without even throwing a punch at all. No, especially if you look at me, all eyes on me. I'm supposed to be the A-side, like the, the future superstar. I'm standing like this in the bladed fucking stance with the, with the Philly shell. And I'm basically just countering off what you do. And that's supposed to be a criteria for him actually um, doing what he needs to do while making the other fighter look bad. And I think the other fighter, the, cause like I said, I know that he got power and he had dropped this dude and you could see it in Montana's love's eyes. He didn't want to have, he didn't want no part of, of, of uh, a fucking uh, uh, Sparks. 
uh, uh, Stevie Sparks. Right. So at the end of the day, I think he ended up tossing him out the ring on purpose. He did that little hip toss that they teach us in the military. You can lie right. about it, you can deny, but it's very easy. When somebody gets on your back and you just you you thrust your hips just a little bit and bend your knees, you can flip somebody over really easy. So I right. think he lost his nuts and he took the easy way out. But that, that, that's interesting, Gonzalo, because you touched on the on the whole thing about the the, the Philly shell and all that. Montana Love is one of those guys that he's got very quick hands, quick feet, and then from the southpaw stance, when he's fighting lesser fighters, those guys don't know how to get him. So, and he can, he can intimidate them with his speed. You get a guy like Sparks in there, strong, doesn't give a fuck, is willing to take one shot, to walk you, he, he'll walk through that one shot and then get inside on you and just whack you with body shots. That's when you see the real toughness of the counterpuncher. Does he have the pulmonary resources, aka the stamina? And I'm going to keep using that term, by the way, pulmonary resources. Does he, can he string combinations together? If you push him, can he push back? And so on and so forth. And with Montana Love, we saw, nah. Now, of course, you got to take into consideration the fact that he got a big head, but that might have thrown him off for a loop too. But nah, hip, hip tossing a guy out the ring, that way he wanted out. Which again, just goes to show you why... I think some people are being too harsh with Janabek because at least Janabek, okay, he had a hard time. He turned it on late. He never got uh, crazy. He never started clinching. He didn't start looking for a way out or stalling with excessive clinching or running. He stayed right in front of the uh, Bentley and turned it on late. What did Montana Love do on the other hand? Threw a guy out the ring. So, Gonzalo, what do you think happens in a rematch? Um... The, the, the dude's punchy power is not going to go away in his aggressiveness. Yeah, Montana Love, he was landing. Was he a right hander? Or right hander, right? Yeah, he's a right The other guy yeah. was a left hander. I forget. Yeah, he was landing some of the right hands, but they weren't all that clean, like you said. You, you put it perfectly. Like, once you get past that, that initial counter strike and you get inside and you're roughing this dude up, it was kind of like that. It was nip and tuck. It was a good fight. It was fucking close. It wasn't like the most exciting of the fights. But I had this, um, I had this feeling that, and you really have to pay attention because since, uh, what is it, Stevie Sparks, he's he's he's, he's bulldo bulldozing his way through. It's kind of doesn't look. You you have to pay attention to see what you're doing because maybe, like in the in, in the later rounds, it's gonna pay off. He's gonna break the dude down. But we hadn't seen that until the point of we never did really see that. But I I think if you you count his aggressiveness, if you pay attention to that, he actually was winning the fucking fight, man. Because Montana Love wasn't really landing so many right hands. That's and right. he had got, gotten the knockout. So that's what I'm saying. Um, there was a lot to be, uh, there was a lot left in that fight. And I just think that it would have got worse, in my opinion, for Montana Love, by the look of his eyes and the reaction that he had by throwing the other dude out the ring. Like I said, I thought he lost his nuts. Basically, he didn't want to find that out. Right? It's like Miguel Cotto. I'm not, this is not a good example, but. Miguel Cotto versus Margarito, anyhow. The, 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 it might be tight in the beginning. It might be a close fucking fight. But later, one guy takes over. That's not the, a good example, a perfect example. But I'm just saying. Oh, it is a good example. It is a good example because at the, in youth box, you know how it is. It's easy to look good when, you're, when you've got uh, uh, full lungs. But then when you start getting tired, you can't do what you... You, you know what you got to do, but you can't do it because you're tired. That's when the real fighter comes out of you. Are you. Do you have the stamina to, to get that second win? Do you have the balls to get through when you're tired? Some guys don't. You know, that's why it's a hard sport. And that's why Please. only a... Yeah. Actually, BDA, BDA, I think that the Jani Beck opponent and that Jani Beck versus Benny fight was similar to the Montana Love. And, 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 and uh, as a matter of like uh, understanding the opponent's Bentley was like a, like a Stevie Sparks, power puncher coming forward, but um, the same as the same as, as Stevie Sparks was. But when Johnny Big got in that position, he found some resolve uh, by uh, going the distance and actually winning the fucking fight down the stretch. This this one with uh, Montana Love, we didn't actually get to see the fight materialize in the That's in the right. latter half, but because. He threw the other guy outside the ring, but he could have been put in the same position. Um, Montana Love as uh, Johnny Pick was, you know, but That's Johnny right. Pick found his nuts why this guy didn't. 
Exactly. That's a great way of putting it. One guy found his nuts, the other guy didn't. And Gonzalo, how many times have we wasted money and time watching some of these guys cheat us out of entertainment? Because that's why we really, really is boxing. It's entertainment. Let's not try to twist around and, oh, it's gladiators and the sweet science. I mean, it, there's components to that. At the end of the day, it's two guys punching each other over the head with gloves on. And, and how many times have we been cheated? Gonzalo, are we ever going to, uh, should we start calling for reparations? Boxing reparations, because I mean, I can count, the, I can do a list of the amount of times that I've been cheated from, from the decades that I've been watching this sport. What do you think? You agree or disagree? Come on now. I, I mean, there's, there's always people that are going to try to get over and make a quick buck. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, at the end of the day, I, I don't think the fight was that bad. I, th I thought it was all right. Pretty good. You know, I, you got actually, actually BDA. The Jenny big fight, by the time it was over, I was like, man, good fucking fight. Because the, the, the UK dude from Ghana, he fucking, he brought it. And Jenny big close strong. It was like, it was like the Anthony Joshua versus Alexander Usyk in the latter rounds. You know, they close strong. Jenny big was looking for the knockout. <laughs> as far as the Montana level, yeah, it was just kind of entertaining. <laughs> yeah, know, he, that's what he I'm threw saying. That pull out of the ring. But that's I'm what not, I'm, I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna get all man. Like I feel cheated or anything. Well, you know what? That's a good point though. That the ending sort of made up. I mean, it, it, but but I wanted to see a clean ending though. I'd rather see a clean ending than a shit ending. No matter how bombastic or outrageous it may be. But that's just me. But again, that's, I think there's been other fights where I th I definitely think we got reparations coming to us. Shout out to LDBC's most wanted for his contribution with the super chat. He's a saludos BDA and panel. What are your thoughts on Valdez versus Navarrete? Personally, love the fight. Shout out to the Buff Father for a great fight. Well, shout out to LDBC's most wanted. Uh, Gonzalo, give us your thoughts on Navarrete versus Valdez, and then I, I'll get to the phone lines here. We got some people calling it, but go ahead, Gonzalo. What do you think? Valdez, Navarrete, give us the bare bones version of what you expect. Well, Valdez is aggressive. He's shorter, so I mean, he's always brought it. He's like an Arturo Gatti, like he's, um, he's exciting, but he's facing a taller dude uh, with longer arms. If he's not taller, he's definitely got longer arms for sure. And then Navadrete, Navadrete is in and out. He's a fresher fighter. He, uh, he starts as the fighter, as the fight starts uh, going down the stretch, he starts dialing his punches in. Well, that dude also, oh, there's a, uh, Valdez also brings it, but I think he just gets beat up in the process because we know that that's what Navarrete does. He breaks down his opponents. And I think that um, Valdez cuts too easy. I think he got paper skin and he's, he's had a broken nose and he's a little shop worn. So I think he'll still come to fucking fight. But in the end of the day, Navadrete will, will get him by coming in and out and just applying a, a boxing clinic. We'll see, man. Hey, listen, Valdez has pulled surprises before and, and Navadete is slow. He does tend to uh, go for broke when he doesn't need to. So he better pray he doesn't run into something there. We'll see. Maybe he plays it safe a little bit in this one or a little safer than usual. Uh, let's go to the phone lines here. The phone lines here. Don't forget, fellas, you can call in. Phone numbers right there in the middle left-hand portion of your screen. Let's go to 214 here. Uh, 214, you're on the air. 214, what's on your mind? Yeah, uh, I didn't really watch any of the other, other fights. I only watched the TV part fight. Mm -hmm. And I thought it was a good fight. I thought it was a good fight. I thought Montana Love was doing good when he wasn't on the ropes or being pressured. You know, he was very sharp. He was very, uh, he had some good movement. But I, I had a feeling since this fight was uh, announced that Stevie Sparks wasn't too far behind him. It's not just a, uh, a skill, but, you know, he, I think he really wanted to win this fight. And I had a feeling that he was going to win this fight. I just didn't know if he was going to, I don't know how he was going to win. But, uh, like, I really think that this guy is, a, is getting up there. And Stevie Sparks, with a couple more fights, he could be a elite fighter. And as for Montana Love, I don't know, man. He's like stuck in this weird place where he's good. Mm. Yeah. Why did you think? I, uh, so I you, think so uh, you didn't watch the Johnny Big fight, you said, right? I, no, I didn't watch Johnny Big, so I can't really say anything about him. All right, all right. Uh, 
So what do you think of Montana Love versus Sparks? How do you think that goes in a in a rematch? A rematch. I think Montana Love will probably do better, but I think that I think this time I think Sparks gonna get his KO. Yeah, man, I think so too. I think uh I think this time uh Montana Love would probably run around the ring, try to avoid any hard contact, but uh I don't know, man. It's just I don't see him having the type of fortitude required to beat Sparks. Uh, caller, anything else you want to say before we move on? No, that's it. All right. Thank you for your call. Call back next time, man. Take it easy out there. All right. Bye. All right. Let's go to 205 here. 205. 205. What's on your mind? 205. What's, what's up, man? What's up, BDA? What's happening, family? Oh, it's Uncle Charles. What's up, man? Man, what's happening, man? Man, man, it's a blessing to see y'all, man. And like I said, man, be glad, man. As long as you're on top of ground, as long as you're on top of ground and you ain't up under, you're doing good. Let me just say That's this, right. man. We're in a world of disillusion, and I'm mm. sick of it. You got two of the best wealthy weights in the world that will not get in the ring because we got some greedy-ass promoters. Let me explain some to you. Let me explain this to the promoters. Let me explain some to you. One thing I know you ain't going to be able to do since your ass is so greedy. You won't be able to outlive money, but money will be able to outlive your ass. Mm. And if they change green money into pink money tomorrow, your ass ain't going to have nothing anyway. You got these guys want to fight. Make the fight. They're not, them guys is not just going to be the women. It's the, it's, it'll put a joke into the economy. Everybody's going to watch that fight and put money on the fight. Think about it. The people that do the Uber going to make some money. The people at the popcorn section stand going to make T-shirts, everything. See, you got people that Americans can work that night, make the money, and take care of their families and pay their bills. But y'all so damn greedy, y'all want all the damn money. Let me guess that is. You know, we are all Americans in this country. We got different cultures, white, black, green, and yellow, whatever the case may be. Whoever you are, you still made by the almighty. But let me just say this. Uh, I, we do have red blood in our veins like everybody else. But I, 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 I got a problem with the different cultures. Now, I, I can say this. My white brothers and sisters invented, invented bungee jumping. Now, you know black folks didn't in, invent no damn bungee jumping. <laughs> but we had to try what our white brothers and Sisters tried, and we got up there, and Tony got up there, and Bungie jumped off the damn bridge, and then he bust his head to the white meat, and for two damn weeks, he was in rehab, and now his ass is out, and he can't eat real food, the only thing he can eat is goddamn tapioca, but let oh. me just say this, man, you need to realize that we, 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 we got the same blood in our veins, but we just got different cultures, let me tell you something. My white brothers and sisters came up with the good old rock climbing. Now, you know we don't do no damn rock climbing. But right. Tyrone got up there anyway, and then his ass fell, and now he's dead. And ain't nobody looking for his ass. Nobody looking for him, because nobody cares. But I tell you who cares. Them goddamn brothers are sucking up in the air. That's who damn cares. <laughs> well, let me just say this, man. Right. I believe in respecting one another. And like I said, we're all Americans. We just got different cultures. But, you know, I try to take care of my community. I try to do good for the people around me. Ah, oh, I planted me a garden, man. I had tomatoes. I had onions. I had lettuce. But then I noticed my damn tomatoes was missing. And then the guy next door, he always waving at me and stuff. And I said, no, nah, ain't no way. He mm. came and got my damn tomatoes. But I didn't put it past him. And all of a sudden, three of my tomatoes came up missing one day. So I got in the yard on Sunday. And all of a sudden, he come up in the yard. And I'm like, he said, well, you still in that garden, ain't you? I said, yeah. He said, I said, yeah, but some of my tomatoes is missing. He said, well, maybe a dog got it. I said, uh, somebody got it, and it wasn't no dog. <laughs> but uh, you want to try one of these tomatoes? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah I'll try one. I said, well, hold on. Let me, let me, let me, let me get, put you a little salt on it. And I said, here, yeah, go ahead and eat it. I said, it's pretty good, ain't it? He said, man, what you put on these tomatoes? I said, Mrs. Johnson cat come out every Tuesday. And you should have saw his goddamn face. Let me tell you something. You got my vegetables? You got what you want, and you got some of Mrs. Johnson cat. So that's all I got to say. Make the damn fight where everybody can, 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 can do, do what they need to do, and people can take care of their families. Quit being greedy, goddammit. And that's all I got to say, B.D. And I, man, love y'all, man. 
<laughs> All right, Uncle Charles, right back at you, man. Thank you for your call. <laughs> Have yourself a, a good rest of the night. <laughs> and install some cameras. Put some security cameras around there. Your degenerate neighbors will no longer be able to steal your vegetables. That's pretty low, by the way. Somebody stealing another man's... I mean, think about it. You take the time to plant those motherfuckers. You grow them. You water them. And then some degenerate neighbor comes along, probably drunk, wants a late night snack. He sees the th those tomatoes, starts licking his chops, goes, let me go get those tomatoes. That's a little bit... Or maybe it's weed. <laughs> I don't know. You know, weed gives you the munchies. But shout out to Uncle Charles, man. He, Gazelle, are you... I know we haven't been doing that many uh, episodes lately because there's not much going on. When did you get tired of talking about this fucking Crawford Spence uh, fiasco? Uh, a long time ago, when I when I thought that no matter how far in the future I could um, um, like think of how if it could happen or not, uh, like yeah, a long time ago, I didn't. I, I foresaw that this was going to happen, so I therefore I didn't think about it too hard. A long time ago, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't waste my time. Basically, wasting my time. Yeah, right. Yeah, man. Two, three years ago, I knew we would be here now. In other words, but you know what, though, Gonzalo, what gets to me about those two assholes is the the way they've been treating fans, talking about how hey, y'all need to get alive. That's what they've been saying on Twitter. Y'all like as if people are spending twenty four hours a day on Twitter uh, reading about. Uh, maybe there might be there might be some people. You never know. Some degenerates out there that do that. But but are, are people really that, uh, is that fight, you know, are people beleaguered by the fact that that fight is not going to happen? No. Some people are just watching a little bit here and there, and that's it. These motherfuckers treat fans like they're shit, and I said this before in another episode. They're treating us like shit. We're the guys that are paying for them. Nobody, the, the mainstream fans don't even know who these fuckers are. We're the ones that are going to pay for the fight. So, hey, Spence and Crawford, keep pissing us off, keep demeaning us and disparaging us. By the time you guys fight... There might not be anybody watching anymore. All right? But that's a, that's the thing. Some people go like, well, were there... Yeah. I even heard some... Yeah. It, by the way, is my mic too loud? No, no, you're good. You're good. Yeah, and, but now what, what happens... What happens now is they're stepping on fighters from a different generation's toes. What I mean by this is basically by the time, if ever... Crawford versus Spence takes place, you know, it's become, it would be like comparable to Chocolatito versus Estrada part three, mm -hmm. with, with, but actually without ever having to take in place before one or two, basically, you know, Estrada and Chocolatito are still good, but maybe you say to yourself, okay, there's other fighters that could possibly beat those guys. And I got one fighter in, 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 uh, in mind, for example, um, the little dude, what's his name? The Mexican dude. The Mexican dude, the that's uh, brothers, the yeah, the Mexican American with Robert Garcia that changes Bam angles. Bam Rodriguez. Bam Rodriguez, yeah, yeah. So now I could say, okay, maybe Chocolatito loses to Bam Rodriguez, maybe Estrada loses to to Bam Rodriguez. Estrada didn't look that great in the last fight. Maybe they're they're downhill now with these Walters. I could say the thing, same thing. Maybe they lose against Crawford. Maybe they lo lose against Burenes. So. Their their window of opportunity, yeah, the fight could still be made, but it's not gonna be the big event that they were hoping to get. Like mm -hmm. with the the, the 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 whole world's gonna stop and they look at me, you know. Yeah, it, the fight will take place, but it would be like Pacquiao Mayweather, like fucking Chocolatito versus Gallito, uh, fucking part three. Not in the prime of their primes what it needed to happen. Whether you sell millions upon millions of of, of well, like million pay per views, or you make a lot of money or not. Hey man, you you work with what you got. Obviously, if you if you're not that superstar, you probably would never be that, like a Canelo. So obviously, you got to fight or or what? You think you're gonna turn into fucking Canelo overnight for whatever reason in your mind? Especially if you're not that uh that you're not that like the personality personality wise. They don't put themselves out there. Well, you know what, man. You, you also you gotta take into account what uh, people like Jimmy and, and uh, Steve Kim have been saying for a while now, which is that you gotta stay sharp by staying in the ring. You gotta have you gotta fight. You're staying in the gym, it's it's just not the same. I mean, it's better than nothing. Don't get me wrong, but but you actually have to fight because no matter how hard you spar, well, I mean, you could you could try to have actual bouts during sparring, but that's gonna take its toll on you. But an actual fight is much different than even ninety percent sparring. When I say that, I mean when people spar at a 90% intensity or even 95%. So 
So, uh, you know, again, like Janibek fighting twice a year, uh, that's not enough, especially against no hopers. And and then you got guys like Terence Crawford and Errol Spence. I mean, Terence Crawford hasn't fought at all this year. He's going to fight uh, against Avenesian. Don't, would you be surprised if he looks like crap against Avenesian? Because he's no, he's no spring chicken either, uh, Terence Crawford. I, I don't know. Uh, el, el, uh, the Avenesian, he looked good. And the last fight against the one that I saw was Josh Taylor. But you got to take into consideration that that Josh Taylor dude can't crack. Mm -hmm. So obviously you're going to look like a million bucks walking that dude down. If you got to be wary of what's coming back at you, you're not going to rush in there and look that dominating like you did against a guy that can't crack, like I said, once again. So, I mean, yeah, you have to, you have to be cognizant and worry about uh, Crawford's power. And it would be foolish and reckless to just come out guns blazing. So, uh, will, 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 what's his name, David Anavinicio, make him look bad? He shouldn't because of the caliber fighter, caliber fighter that, that Terrence Crawford is, you know, and most people think like that because obviously he's considered to be one of the best pound for pound fighters in the world. But what's, what's going to happen now? Is he going to get exposed? And well, a lot of people have been saying that he never was. I think he's good, but a fighter like Avenician, he should be able to take, uh, he should be able to beat him easily. I think. But, but that's the thing though. But but that's the thing, though. If you're thinking about the Terrence Crawford from four years ago, three years ago, yeah, maybe. But he hasn't fought since October. He's getting older. He's a guy that relies a lot on his reflexes. He doesn't. He puts. He leaves his chin up in the air. He doesn't really have a guard to speak of. I don't know, man. It's, I wouldn't be surprised if his timings. Are, but that's the thing, though. He's going in there with a guy like Avenisian who's feeling his oats now, since he he defeated uh, Josh Kelly. He's getting better. He's, he's as good as he's ever going to get. He's the type of guy that if you go in there after a long layoff and you're getting older and you're looking past the guy because you, you just don't want to get up for that type of opponent compared to a guy like Spence, I don't know, it could be trouble. It could be trouble. But well, you know what Terrence Crawford has going for him is that punching power. He really is a big puncher and that might, he might, that's all he, you know, that, he's been bailing himself out. Kel Brook was out boxing him, bails himself out, boom, with one shot. Sean Porter, I thought, was beating him. Bails himself out with, with punching power. So that's the way it's always been for him for the most part. So maybe you're right. Maybe he takes uh, Avenisian out. But I'm just curious to see how he's going to look. Might even end up uh, paying for it on BLK Prime or whatever. Yeah, it's a good fight. It's a good fight. That dude's going to go for it, Avenisian. He's going to go for it. He might make him look bad in spots in the beginning. I'll box him. I think he might, man. He's, a, he's got an Armenian blood. You know the Armenians are still alive right oh, now because yeah, they, you know? they survived the genocide. If you get if you meet an Armenian, that means his his ancestors survived the genocide. That means he's got survivor genocide survivor blood in him. That's something to uh, to to look. Uh, uh, you got to be careful against that. You never know. Uh, you, you fucking, aren't those you gotta, dudes supposed to be like some of the strongest people in the world, like pound for pound? I think so, man. I think so. I have to ask a uh, folk art like in, <laughs> about what type yeah. of genes they got in there, but. Uh, yeah, but we'll see what happens with that. We'll see what happens with that. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Did you see the uh, Fernando Vargas' son? Oh, yeah, I did. Yeah. What did you think of Second him? round he stoppage. Did. In the beginning, it's like, yeah, it's one of those things again. He, it, it, I, I started, like, he stopped him in the second round, but I was too, uh, my expectations were high because I, I thought it was the other brother, the one with the perm, the, the malvado. That's the worst of the three. He can't crack. He's a short little motherfucker. You know, the, the ugliest one of the bunch. The ugly duck, but it wasn't. It was this guy, the younger, the younger <laughs> brother. They're all named Fernando, by the way. But wait, wait, He's supposed to a, be, this one's supposed to. <laughs> that's how you categorize them. By yeah, by Michel Mado, Malvado, no. <laughs> yeah. He looks like the fucking, he looks like the little ice cream, little shit emoji, but with eyes. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! But no, he talks a lot of shit too. Yeah, no, the, the big brother, yeah. the big brother is the one that hits really hard. The oldest, the eldest, mm -hmm. and the one that fought yesterday was the youngest. He kind of looks like the like the older brother. They're tall, like the dad. They can crack. And I was getting a little impatient in the beginning, but he ended up stopping him in the second round. What I saw, the, the reason I say this, because he got his head snapped back two times. Fernando Vargas, Emiliano. Mm -hmm. I was like, damn, dude, he's fucking catching punches. 
what if this goes on for like a few rounds, man, and, and he continues to catch a shot like that? Am I gonna think he's like a mungia or something? Right, right. Not, nah, but he he got his head snapped back and he reacted with the with the perfectly timed uh, left left cross. It was kind of like cross hook where he turned it over. It was like a short hook. Yeah, but you know what? Um, like you said, he, he had, stopped that dude. He knocked him out. He had his chin up in the air, though. That's like you said. That's what I didn't like. So I, I want to see this guy. You know, go go. For, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? See if he's got more than just power. Because again, we just saw with with guys like Montana Love, Janibek got pushed in there, and we we saw that he's got uh, stamina and heart and balls. Uh, that's what I want to see against uh, from from uh, the Vargas' son. But at least he's got power. Don't really, you can tell he's got that Mayweather influence, fighting with the hands down a little bit and all that. I don't like that, but uh, again, very young. We'll, well see his happens. dad used to take him there, and he tells them, he tells them, inteligente before valiente. Basically, I think Fernando Vargas is thinking, when I was young, I stepped up too early. I wanted to be too brave. And, you know, I wore my heart on my shield, and, and I ended up catching a lot of punches when I, I could have maybe done it a little different and that's what he wants to instill on this into his children to be a little bit more defensive but sometimes if you don't have it man like for example like fernando vargas is i see his children the same way at least the one that fought yesterday they're kind of like they're they're kind of square at the waist they don't got that that you they don't got that that body frame where you, they're gonna be slipping and, and dodging like the, using the bending from well canelo's also like that and he does it so that, that i mean i think that, that it doesn't have to be like that but what i'm saying they don't necessarily look fast they're not gonna be like your the guy that's gonna uh, they're tall they're not, not gonna uh dip and roll under shots um so what are you gonna do defensively to to get away from punches i just don't see it in them um maybe a high guard that's why costa zoo fights the way he does because they're built a certain way where they got power but i mean it, it's all how you develop but i just i i, I saw him catch uh, some punches last night and i was wondering defensively what are you teaching them your children right i mean yeah they don't look teach a little them, average don't teach them the shoulder roll you know fighting with the hands down using your feet to get out of the way with your hands down Teach them good, solid defense. Tuck that chin in. Put your hands up. Uh, lean forward a little bit so that you can actually protect your, your body as well with the elbows. And boom, you're solid. You're golden. Don't try any fancy yeah, stuff. Yeah, I would say a little way, parry, yeah. too, BDA. A little parry and a, and a slipping to the side. That's right. Just a little, a little bending parry. at the waist and tilting in to let the punches fly by your head. A, a little parry never hurt nobody. That's what I like to say. Uh... But yeah, we'll see what happens with those dudes. Uh, but I wanted to say something too as well here. Uh, I so I was on the, in the Discord and Phil Baroni, shout out to Phil. He's like, hey, you guys got to watch the Mayweather card because, you know, he had an exhibition earlier today. It's a shit show. So I, I, I tuned in. My goodness gracious. Uh, listen, you guys think we got bad production here with the internet going off every two seconds. Th that production had to be one of the worst I've ever seen. First of all, two commentators, one of them looked like he was, or sounded like he was hopped up on cocaine. Uh, and I'm saying sounded like, because I can't cast aspersions for legal reasons and say that he was on cocaine, but he sounded like it. Uh, they turned the lights <laughs> across the arena way down. It was in uh, Dubai, and the, the arena was half empty, so they turned the lights down. Looked like a fucking satanic mess in there. And then they bring in Jake Paul. He looks embarrassed to be there. Tommy Fury comes in. Uh, he's got an exhibition because his opponent uh, dropped out the last uh, minute. So, see, so he goes in there in an exhibition, fights some guy that's not even trying. And I understand it was an exhibition, but you know they, they've said before, oh, exhibition match, and the guys go all out. It just means that it's not a sanction as a, it's not counted as a professional fight, but you can go all out. These guys didn't do that. They were dancing around each other. Tommy Fury, I've seen him in real fights. The guy's horrible compared to actual boxers then him and, and his father tom uh, uh, john fury they get into it with jake paul outside the ring oh by the way the sound production was awful too everything sounded way low and then all of a sudden every time the round ends or starts bang the bell sounds and it sounds louder than everything else in the broadcast it was just a shit show <laughs> i didn't even stay tuned for the, for the for the main event which was mayweather against some youtuber but man i hope gazello hopefully this is the end 
of these YouTube exhibitions, you know, YouTubers versus actual boxing fighters or fighters versus, uh, boxers versus MMA guys because it's disgusting, it's sick, and I'm not going to have it anymore. I'm not. In fact, I might sue somebody. <laughs> I'll try to talk to Rayful <laughs> Shapiro, my attorney. But uh, the other thing I wanted to talk to you about is uh, so, uh, uh, Isaac Cruz was announced as the WBC mandatory for Shakur Stevenson, and apparently he's not going to fight Shakur Stevenson. He already said no to a Ryan Garcia fight. Gazelle, are they just trying to, is this the PBC or somebody involved with the PBC just telling him, fuck all those guys, you're going to fight Tank Davis again? And on, on whose behalf? On, on Pitbull Crew side? Well, the PBC. Somebody Tank Davis and all them? Yeah, yeah, I think Al somebody in that's... Yeah. Top rank? I don't know, man. I don't know. It's... I mean, I watched that fight. I, w I would... I would watch that fight, but if he doesn't fight, so of course Stevenson is like whatever, man. That fool, what is he gonna do with, against Pitbull Cruz? He can't necessarily go to the nuts because the Pitbull Cruz is like really short. And uh, would he win? Probably by controlling the distance. That's what Shakur Stevenson does. You could call him a master of the distance too, probably. Like instead of like when you. When, when you're supposed to like meet in the center of the ring, yeah, this fool comes forward, but as soon as you step to him, he separates again with the feet and pops off the jab. And then when he comes in, he keeps you at bay with the jab, and that's basically where he can control the fight. Like, and against a shorter guy, we saw what happened with Valdez. Would I give Pitbull a shot? I don't. I know that's not the question that you actually asked, but... But, but I don't know. But here's the thing. He's got a hard head, and that dude, that dude's got bad hands. He's got bad. If he if he cracks Pitbull on the top of the cranium, he's gonna hurt his hands. Then what is but he gonna say later? I had him fight with my with my jab hand, and that's how I controlled it with my feet and my jab. Because he's gonna end up hurting his hands. If if you guys ever boxed a little fucking Mexican dude from the capital of Mexico, Chilangos, they were brought in to, like they invaded Tijuana, like. Um, Immigrants, there's something about them, dude. They're fucking their little body is fucking hard as fuck. Where you touch them in the head, it fucking hurts. They feel fucking solid, right? And the thing with Shakur is not that he don't hit hard, because he he's got all the mechanics to punch hard. But the harder he throws, the more he will hurt his hand. That's right. And if he throws hard to Pitbull Cruz, he'll end up fucking his hands up for sure. That for some right. reason I believe that wholeheartedly. I agree so I, if I were if I were Shakur Stevenson, I would think about it twice too, because he ended up getting hurt too, and it would be one of those type of performances. It would be fucking boring. He would, yeah, exactly. He would probably win, but he, he'd have to really backfoot bitch and, and clinch and all, and uh, try to hit him in the balls to uh, to really ensure that win. At the end of the day, I, you know, I think someone at the PBC side is trying to get Pitbull to stay there so that they can match him up with Tank Davis again down the line. I don't think, you know, because, again, he could have fought Ryan Garcia for, for a lot of money. Apparently, they said no. Now, it's, you know, he's willing to give. I think he's got a title. And Shakur Stevenson is the, the number one. Something like, I, again, you guys know I don't follow the titles, but he should really dump that belt. If if they're going to offer him more money for the Tank Davis fight, then stay with the Tank Davis fight. Because, again, that's another top opponent. And Shakur Stevenson is just about to start fighting at 135. So I, I really don't see the point of uh, Cruz fight. But that's a great point you made about Cruz Stevenson. It, there's, it's not a coincidence that some, a lot of these slick American fighters have brutal hands. I mean, show me a, another fighter. Like, look, I, I'm pretty sure there's one or two Mexican fighters with top five Mexican fighters with bad hands. Or, you know, they injured their hands. You know, I think Canelo just injured the... Uh, no, actually, I think he injured his shoulder or something. But anyway, but, but it's not a coincidence all these no, other he Americans... Showed, he, he, he injured the cartilage in his, in his jab hand. He, what is he, a righty... Um, is he, he 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 messed the up left. his left hand? The left, yeah. That's yeah, but that's one of those things. Canelo's always going at the bag. He's going at the bag. Well, he hits the water bag a lot. That's a good bag because it displaces the water. And when you land clean, it's it mimics the the body because the body is like eighty percent made out of water. But no, he he works out. He 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 sledgehammers. You know, like you say before, BD, the governor bag, that round big mitt. He uses a water bag and he also hits a punching bag. So that dude's constantly in the work and the gym punching, punching. And since he's a righty, for him to get leverage on that, um, on the lead hand, when he goes to the body, because he can go with the left and, and with the right. But when he goes with the left, 
Dude, you gotta catch it back at a certain angle if you're if you're a right-hander to develop because not everybody can crack uh, right. to the body if you're a right-hander to that side of the body. So when you're a consummate uh, body puncher like Canelo, and you try to turn into that lead hand to the body, like with mean intentions, you're bound to hurt your hands if you're Canelo because I don't. He's not the biggest dude either, but he tries to punch like he is the biggest guy in the room, especially because he got a lower center of gravity. So, I mean, it might be one of those injuries that he's uh, gotten throughout um, all these years of, of hitting the bag and stuff. And, and That's fucking a good boxing. point. Now, yeah, he's been boxing for a long time. Now. He's, he's what, 32, 31? He's been boxing since 15 so, as a professional. So, yeah, that's bound to take its, uh, its toll. Uh, don't forget to hit the like, fellas. Yeah, might, like, might as well throw a little adamantium in there, like Deontay Wilder. <laughs> Put a little like, something on him, make him punch harder. Yeah, make him make it <laughs> a cyborg. Make him close back as a beast. <laughs> Hey, let me go to the phone lines here. Let's go to 929. 929, you're on the air. 929, what's on your mind? Hey, how's it going, BDA? What's up, Gonzalo? What's up, man? Hey, what's up, Rachel? Yeah, man. Um, yeah, I just want to first off, you know, congratulate my kind of love for um, winning the Royal Rumble um, <laughs> from the Rocket Mortgage, you know, Field House in Cleveland, Ohio. <laughs> Wait, hold on, what's up? One second. Um, was that? He got disqualified. Oh, who well, I guess who? Jeff? Oh, oh, I mean, uh, Steve Spark. Yeah, Steve Spark. <laughs> yeah, that was fucking embarrassing, man. Um, Eddie got to cut him loose, man. That was just a terrible showing. Um, but it, you know, it was a, it was mostly like a, a shit show for most of the night because Johnny Beck, um, unfortunately, uh, was playing it with his food, and as a boogeyman, you're supposed to dominate and basically devour him, and. I I think he basically just treated him like a sparring partner, you know, just to just to prepare for like a a twelve round fight. Maybe he's uh, he's using him as a sparring partner for uh, for Andre, who for some reason doesn't want to doesn't want to move back down and fight fight him. But um, it, it's it's going be from from here on out. So it, it's always going to be like a, a second guessing. Also, you know, like oh he's full now. Oh maybe that's all part of the part of the plan. I, I think that's it. Like. It's all part of the plan, you know, to, to attract uh, these uh, these do nothing uh, fighters at 160, because you know this. After all, this division is very stagnant, and it only remains one uh, apex predator, you know, in Triple G, and he's unified champion. You know, no one's calling him out. I, I don't know. It's a good point. Uh, you know, I, I don't. I think who would you think who do you think be, wins between Golovkin and uh, Johnny Big? Well, uh, age uh, may uh, trump experience. You know, I think Yannick uh, has shown, has shown uh, um, some decent reflexes. You know, he he did, he did move around well against uh, a guy who really didn't want to punch with him. I don't know why. Should have just pushed forward. But um, yeah, I, I'm picking Yannick because of the age. I think uh, Lovkin has slowed down. He's already he's, he's four years old. You know, I just I just can't. I, it's hard for me to imagine him all of a sudden. Um, unless he's on the juice, to to just turn it back the clock, you know, and just and just uh, outperform him. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I think he is on something. And, um, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Got a super chat. Yeah, well, well, go ahead, man. Before we uh, move on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'll, 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 you know, I just. Uh, I just want to leave off with this, man. It's like, is Johnny Big overrated a little bit? But to to what effect does the the does um being overrated, you know, applies to to like promotion, like how it, it, the fight sells, the numbers that that has to you know has to be the end result. And like, if it doesn't, if people are not are not excited to see it, then it is what it is. You know, people don't even know his name. You know, that's right. And it's very convenient for them to 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 to. to avoid him just like they did Golovkin you know early in his career but top rank is is going to be hopefully they can be invested heavily invested into the middleweight division and attract some some fighters that can fight him you know um so I just want to leave with, with one question with actually two questions right um and then I'll hang up uh one is who uh, do you see um Valdez versus El Vaquero playing out the same way like uh Valdez versus Rochelle and for Gonzalo is uh since there is a, since you uh, mentioned that that phrasing um uh 
back foot bitch. Is there a such thing as a front foot, uh, as a front foot faggot? <laughs> front foot faggot. All right, that was just thank you for your comment. We'll answer those questions. <laughs> Have a good night, man. Gonzalo, well, answer the second question first. Is there such a thing as a front foot? Uh, well, I, I can't say the word twice, but you know, front <laughs> foot F. No, I don't think so. No, I don't know what that means. I think that, that the very act that, of going forward and making the fight that eliminates you from being Yeah, it makes you brave. Uh, yeah, exactly, yeah. So I think that's the Yeah, there's no one. faggot about that. There's, yeah. Unless you're doing it naked and greased up or something with it, a heart. Might, I think that that, yeah. It might make you reckless. You know, it might make you reckless. Now, what about the, the, the first like, question, uh, which was, do, do you see uh, El Vaquero versus, uh, versus uh, Valdez? going the way of Valdez Burchelt, meaning upset. The way v Valdez Burchelt, basically, no, because Burchelt, he cocked back on his shots uh, a little too much where he pulled that shoulder back and it was a little slow on the trigger. And basically, when you pull that shoulder two inches back, you can cover two feet stepping forward just as quick. When you pull that shoulder back a little bit to cock, to throw the shot, you can step in, boom, and catch the other <laughs> dude. And I don't uh, think, I, and uh, with, 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 uh, what's his name? Um, the, uh, no, the, El Vaquero. Vaquero is, uh, he's springy, he's like back and forth, long arms, kind of playing, toiling with the jab, but then it kind of stretches like a fucking towel at the end. Oh, man, the more the fight starts going along, the more he starts dialing it in. Boom, he's like, hits you from really far. Boom, man, in and out and starts tagging you and tagging. He's consistent with that. So I, I, he might catch him. Yeah, he might catch him if he catches him coming in with the counter. But I don't see it like that. I, I see the awkwardness of Aldez actually being like, nowadays it's like one of those things where we say, um, why is he not boxing the way a, supporter, a fighter is supposed to behind the jab, like the traditional? Um, is he awkward? Is he reckless? It works for him. So obviously if he does that, that means he's got a good chin. And a lot of times fighters can't find him when he's doing that. So it's one of those things, maybe Valdez, yeah, he can find him in the ring because he's that, um, he's that good. He's been a professional for a long time. So what for other fighters have not been able to do and not work for them might work for fucking Valdez, but I don't think it will. But actually, because it, it goes against uh, popular uh, thinking. The way that he fights, how can that be effective? It's not that he's getting away with it. it it's just it is, effect, it is effective. But somehow uh, that's hard to conceive because that's not the way you're supposed to like really box. We're, we're going to be watching more footage of him. Uh, I'm going to call you one of these days and we're going to do a uh, film analysis joint film analysis and then I'm going to chop it up chop it up nice and good a couple of onions a little gabagoo and then we'll see what happens but uh, I think you're going to uh, you're going to see I agree with you I think Valdez is the favorite to win I mean he's the, he is the favorite to win but uh, there's some things that Valdez could exploit man if he turns it into a sort of a guerrilla warfare he could he could pull something off man but we'll talk about that more as the fight approaches early next year. Shout out to KG, by the way, for his contribution with the Super Chat. Shout out to KG. Uh, he says salute to the panel. Right back at you, KG. Uh, I also want to mention something real quick before we leave, because again, this is just going to be a short podcast. Uh, Uzik versus, what's his name? Uh, Hergovic. Apparently that fight's been mandated. But Uzik's already said that the only fights he can get up for are Fury and and Wilder, maybe a third fight with Joshua, depending on what Joshua, if he gets a couple of comeback bouts or whatever. So I think that fight's gonna, not going to take over, uh, place. Nor should it, because, I mean, think about it. Let's say Uzik drops one of the belts and he fights Fury. Does that make it any less of an intriguing fight? It, it's still going to be the best of, uh, against the best. So I think the best thing for Uzik to do is dump that belt right off the bat. It saves him money, because he doesn't have to pay the, the, the fees anymore, sanctioning fees. And uh, it lets people know that belts are... The belts don't make the person, the person makes the belts. So I think uh, he should, should definitely should do that. And I do think he beats Hergovic. And I would have said that even before Hergovic struggled against that uh, big, old-looking Chinese guy. But that, that, that's not a knock on Hergovic. I think that's just how good Uzik is. Uh, what else? I think, yeah, that's about it, man. That's about it. Is there anything else you want to talk about or uh, say before we leave? 
No, that's pretty much it, BD. If you got nothing uh, else to say, hey, it's all good. Yeah, I was just going to keep it short, just talk about some of the stuff that happened last night. I didn't watch the UFC thing. A lot of people are saying that apparently a guy got upset. Uh, seems like the, the MMA version of Mayweather got upset last night. He got knocked out by some like a real native looking <laughs> Brazilian guy. Like the, the, the types of guys that, that would come out of the, the, the jungle. Oh, by the way, hold on a second. We got a caller here. Sometimes they hang up when they hear me say we're, we're done. Let's go to 831 here. 831, you're on the air. 831, what's on your mind? Uh, I can hear, yeah, I can hear myself in the background, man. BDA. Yes. BDA. Yo. Yeah, go ahead, man. BDA. I fucked up. What happened? I fucked up, man. Nah, come on, man. What'd you do, man? You you didn't kill somebody, did you? Nah. <laughs> he said he fucked up. I hope he didn't fuck up too bad. Because there's some things that even Rafael Shapiro can't help you with. Gazala, what do you think? You, you think this guy uh, really fucked up or? I don't know. That sounds, that sounds strange. Sounded very cryptic. Hopefully you didn't uh, kill anybody. Hopefully you're not like that senator in The Godfather 2. When he wakes up uh, covered in blood and a dead hooker next to him, that's a uh, could get you in trouble. Could get you in trouble. Not in certain states, though. All right. Well, listen. With that being said, we do have to move on. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Everybody that donated via the super chat, by the way, as well. Everybody that called in. Shout out to everybody in the chat. Like I said, Knockout Ned, Straight G Turo, Marcus R, Kevin Fuentes, King Ko, Z Mason, Jen Bart Gis, Chitlin Distributor, Straight G Turo, Danny Lothar. Jump tube, box screen, KG. Of course, I can't forget Gonzalo, the main man. Shout out to you, Gonzalo. Uh, stay on the line here. I just got to talk real quick about the some of the things we got planned for uh, for uh, BDA boxing. Now that there's not that much going on right now, we still got to come on board every week, at least one episode a week to, to entertain people. Shout out to everybody out there. Uh, like I said, thank you for joining us. Shout out to all the callers, everybody that joined in in the chat. Hit the like, hit the like, hit the like. Don't forget to check us out on iTunes, Spreaker, Spotify, and we'll catch you next one, fellas. Take it easy. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.